So thank you for the invitation. Can you see your, my slide yes, right now? Yes. Okay, great. So I uh, really appreciate for uh, this uh, uh, invitation for this nice meeting uh, by Nikita and Dr. Uh, Hermsheng. And uh, today my talk is regarding the cubic and related tech. And I uh, hear the COI disclosure uh, of today's talk. So um, this is a concept of the cell omics or a whole organ body uh, cell and cell circuit analysis framework by cubic. So we first came up with the idea of uh, seeing the entire brain with or, or entire body with uh, uh, optical microscopy because uh, the such setup is suitable for seeing the the object uh, of the size of cells and uh, the subcellular structures. However, uh, uh, by uh, to use this uh, setup. So the sample should be highly transparent. So we needed to develop the new optical clearing method, as well as uh, to extract the biological information from the uh, obtained data. So we have to uh, develop the, uh, some uh, computational tools or uh, analysis pipeline. So in 2014, uh, we first uh, reported two cell papers uh, regarding the part of this uh, framework, the tissue clearing, I through good 3D imaging and image informatics. And uh, later on, we published a bunch of uh, following papers and reviews to uh, propose the improved uh, method uh, in each steps, as well as the concept of the, the whole organ body cell circuit analysis uh, by using uh, tissue clearing and uh, light seed imaging techniques. So uh, on behalf of the cubic team, so we, I, I'd like to introduce the, the current status of the cubic and the cubic uh, related technologies. So as you may know, the tissue clearing was uh, first developed by the Dr. Spartholz early in, in 19th, but uh, after, particularly after 2010, um, the many tissue clearing methods are uh, reported, and uh, they are uh, basically categorized as the hydrophobic, hydrophilic, and uh, hydrogel tissue uh, chemistry. And uh, this goes, of course, in the hydrophobic one, and uh, our cubic is uh, including in the hydrophilic reagent. And uh, many researchers contributed to this field, but uh, main, uh, one of our uh, main contributions is uh, was to develop the quantitative <laughs> and scalable screening method of tissue clearing chemicals. So instead of using the tissue blocks, so we first prepared the fixed brain suspension or fixed tissue suspension, and then we mixed the candidate chemicals with the suspension. And if the candidate chemical has the potential of tissue clearing, the reagent uh, shows the uh, reduced turbidity as uh, shown here. So we easily measure the turbidity with the you know, usual um, light absorbance like uh, OD600. And then uh, we found uh, several chemicals that show the reduced turbidity in the reagent. So we first did the screening uh, from the the chemicals related to the scale recipe reported in Dr. Miyawaki, uh, which used the urea as a main component. But uh, uh, we found that the, some amino alcohols have the really nice potential of uh, enhancing the tissue clearing of the scale uh, recipe. So we mixed the urea and uh, amino alcohols and uh, uh, developed the first generation scale cubic reagent. And we successfully cleared whole mouse brain as well as the whole mouse body um, due to the very strong delipidation and decolorization and our eye matching ability of our first reagent. And later on, our colleagues Tainaka and Murakami uh, dedicated to scale up the the screening from the initial forty to six sixteen hundred. And uh, uh, they, you know, finally did the all of this screening and uh, found 
out the, the best chemicals among uh, this very large uh, chemical library. And uh, as a result, uh, they developed the second gen cubic reagent, uh, including the another type of amino alcohol for uh, the lipidation reagent, as well as the several um, aromatic amides uh, for the ROI matching. So at the point, so uh, please note that we already uh, no longer use urea for creatine. So um, the second gen cubic reagent is, I think uh, it's not sh uh, it, sh it should not be categorized as a hyperhydration um, method. But anyway, the performance of the the second gen reagent is uh, significantly higher than the first gen cubic reagent. So uh, for example, the brain is no longer uh, um, observed in the reagent after creatine. So we now we mainly use the second gen reagent uh, for most of our uh, uh, experiments. And we, of course, uh, we recommended um, researchers to use this uh, latest reagents. The purpose of tissue querying is the, the high throughput light state imaging. And uh, this, this is the first light state we introduced from the LaVision Biotech and uh, somewhat modified uh, for optimization. And finally, took an image of whole Simon uh, YFP transgenic mouse brain, as you can see here. And right now, uh, we've already developed our own uh, custom built light state, um, including this Gemini system. The, the, the specification and the you know, configuration is similar to the method spin, but we already established this setup in 2017. And uh, this uh, Marcus P has the uh, specs of collecting the whole mouse brain image around the 2000 images within 15 minutes. So it's significantly um, the speed up from the, the Lab Jones one uh, we introduced the first time. And uh, the quality of a uh, corrected image is uh, much improved from the, the combination is of first gen cubic and the uh, first uh, ultra microscopy set up to the second gen and cubic reagent and the uh, uh, Gemini Lysis system. And uh, the other, another crucial steps for uh, this framework is not only the creating and imaging, but also the labeling. And because what we can see in the clear sample is what we labeled uh, before and during uh, creating and step. So um, the genetic labeling is uh, one of the major uh, popular uh, method, but uh, the historical labeling is the uh, important alternative of the cell labeling, but uh, there is a significant issue of 3D tissue staining uh, regarding the penetration. So um, even the, the small dyes such as the nucleic nuclear stains sometimes show the resistance uh, to the penetration inside the whole tissue so uh, we speculated that there'll be the complicated physical chemical environment in the system. Uh, not only uh, the staining probes and the buffer condition is involved, but also the, the, the chemical uh, characters of tissue itself is uh, important in the, the conditions or environment. So uh, we set the questions of uh, revealing the uh, the tissue uh, chemical features as a material to develop the ideal 3D staining pro protocol. And uh, after several experiments, we finally found tissue can highly swell, but not only swell, it can swell and shrink and swell in the repeated and reproducible manner. And this is well-known feature of the material, so-called gel, 
and uh, the, the, this um, behavior is already modeled uh, by Dr. Florey in 1950s. So it's a well-known and a major uh, property of the gel. So uh, we determined to uh, collaborate with the expert of the their material science and uh, the, to make a long story short, we finally uh, concluded that the biological tissue uh, can be defined as a, a type of hydrogel, particularly the polyelectrolyte gel uh, composed of cross-linked polypeptides. So um, this conclusion um, actually uh, explains the the behavior, the swelling and the shrinkage behavior I showed in the last uh, slide uh, in as a as a model. So uh, we we thought um, this conclusion well and uh, explain the 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 actual uh, biological uh, the actual features of biological tissue as a gel. And also um, this is uh, the the rediscovery of the Dr. Toyoichi Tanaka's hypothesis that the swelling shrinkage um, behavior is observed in the bio some, some of the biomaterials. And he reported these features in, in the, the late uh, 1780s. So uh, we really uh, excited to um, uh, re, um, rediscover uh, his uh, features in our studies. Anyway, uh, we finally used this finding to newly develop the another screening systems to find out the essential 3D staining conditions. So again, instead of using the biological tissues, so we use the artificial gels, the which chemical feature is very similar to the biological tissue, and uh, uh, it's very easy for us to shape the this artificial gels is a kind of simple um, cylindrical feature, and we stain this cylinder-shaped artificial gel with a dye and evaluated the staining patterns inside and quantitate the quantify the the degree of penetration of the dyes. And uh, this experiment system also allowed us to simulate the staining patterns inside um, by using the diffusion reaction schemes. So uh, we could predict some of the essential parameters even in such a, a simulation result. And here is the representative data um, of the this gel staining assay. And uh, when we use the cyto-16 nuclear stain, the, in the basal buffer conditions, the, this dye uh, all absorbed at the surface of the gel. But uh, after adding several um, chemicals to uh, uh, modulate the binding of this dye and the gel, so we finally got the more gradual pattern of the staining. And uh, this result recapitulated even in the, um, the bi actual biological tissues. So in the final condition, we succeeded in staining the whole uh, cerebellum, uh, in, even in the deep layers. So uh, we repeatedly did uh, such experiment and correct the uh, essential parameters and including the modulation of biological tissues and the probes. And uh, in the case of the, the immunostaining, so uh, we found out that avoiding the two-step uh, conventional um, immunostaining is, should be avoided. So instead of this, so we apply the diconjugated primary antibody or um, secondary fab fragment prebind a complex of the primary antibody uh, for the, 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 the one-step um, penetration and the staining procedure. And also we found the several uh, temperature, several uh, physical parameters such as the temperature and the staining probe concentrations, and in particular, the, the higher concentration of probe is uh, essential for the efficient 3D staining. So we finally integrated all of this finding into a single protocol, and then established a new cubic histovision protocol for 3D staining and the imaging. And we succeeded in uh, show the 
the performance of cubic HV uh, by using the several uh, bunch of antibodies and the, the staining dyes. And the cubic HV enabled the multi-channel 3D staining and imaging. And note that the, the staining reagent is compatible with the, the endogenous expression of the fluorescent protein. So we could not only uh, see the staining signals, but also the endogenous fluorescent protein signals in the single brain. And uh, by using the cubic Im uh, informatics framework, so we could superimpose the all, in, in this case, so we, we superimpose all 10 brains into a single image, and then uh, reconstitute the suit multicolored immunostained brain. So this is a kind of uh, compilation uh, data of the cubic framework, including the whole brain staining, clearing, imaging, and uh, informatics tools. So uh, for further advanced uh, informatics pipeline, uh, we uh, provide the, the cubic single cell resolution atlas as well as the cubic cloud software. So cubic atlas is composed of the cell coordinate, including the, all of the cells inside the whole brain. And uh, the atlas, um, the allen brain atlas data is was uh, transferred to each coordinate. So um, we can see that each cell is the location of each cell in the allen brain atlas. And then um, cubic crowd uses the, this uh, cubic atlas as well as uh, uh, in the, the brain data collected by the end users. So um, the end users collect the many uh, samples and the imaging data, and then uploaded the cubic cloud software, and finally you get the the quantitative data in this uh, single template. So here is an example of the the brain stained with uh, several uh, cell type markers, and uh, um, represented in the cubic address. And of course, we could get the quantitative data, distributions uh, or densities of each cells according to the brain regions. And here's a case of the CFOS immunostaining by cubic HP. And uh, this data can be also applied to the cubic cloud software and uh, quantify the, the densities or cell numbers in each brain region. So if you are interested in, uh, please refer to this um, latest papers from our team. So uh, in summary, uh, cubic framework allows to reveal the spatial diversity of cell types, cell functions, and tissue architecture in the multicellular system. And uh, for analyzing these systems, we established the uh, 3D staining and imaging uh, protocol, cubic HV. And the uh, uh, cubic HV supported multicolor, multimodal, or organ staining and imaging. And uh, this data can be processed in the cubic atlas and the cubic cloud. So uh, here is the uh, um, team members. Um, all of the experiments are done at uh, Dr. Hiroki Weather Lab at Riken and the University of Tokyo with the many collaborators inside and outside and several funding supports. So the cubic clearing reagents are already commercialized uh, from the Frizzy film Waco and the Tokyo Chemical Industry. And you can easily introduce this reagent by purchasing them. Now, particularly the mounting solution is also provided uh, from the TCI and some users uh, struggled with getting the ROI matching oil uh, we reported in our papers, but uh, uh, please uh, purchase this uh, product pre-made product for, uh, for the use. 
And the cubic HBA reagent and the cubic cloud software are uh, provided uh, from the, our startup company, Cubic Stars. Um, if you're interested, interested in place uh, such the, our company's website and Google.